Thanks to the new GitHub Actions feature called Reusable Workflows, you can now reference an entire workflow with just one line of configuration rather than copying and pasting from one workflow to another. It's basically GitHub Action templates on steroids. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to Coder Dave, where we talk about DevOps, especially with GitHub and Azure DevOps. Before we start with today's video, shout out to Ade, Jim, and VJ for being the first three members of this channel. If like them, you want to have preview access to all the videos before they go public, uh, click the join button below. So reusable workflows in GitHub Actions. Thanks to this feature, you can now reference an entire workflow in another GitHub Actions workflow with a single line of configuration, like if they were some normal actions, some single actions. This new feature builds on top of the composite actions that have been introduced a while back. And by the way, if you don't know what they are, you can check this video over here. But in short, composite actions are one or more steps packaged together that then can be referenced as a single action with a single configuration line. Reusable workflows extend this concept, allowing you to reference an entire workflow in another one. If composite actions can be thought of as templates, then the reusable workflows are on another completely new level. Right, let's see how to create a reusable workflow. I want to create my reusable workflow in this repository, which for lack of a better imagination, I called reusable workflow. Reusable workflows are like any other workflow, so I can go in actions and create any workflow I want from here. In my case, I want to set up a workflow myself. I will delete everything, rename that file, build and publish Docker image, because this is what I want to do. And then I can start composing my action. As any other workflow, I can give it a name, and I can set up the triggers. The trigger for the reusable workflow is this workflow call. You can also add other triggers, or normal triggers if you want. But for this example, I will just stick with this. In the workflow call trigger, you can specify input parameters. Like in this case, I want to be able to create and publish Docker images with this workflow, so I may need some of the input parameters. For example, I'm going to have the image name, and I can set it as required. And I need to set the type, which in this case will be a string. And I also want to have a tag to be able to tag my image. And in this case, again, is the string, but is not required. Other acceptable types of parameters are Boolean and number. And since I also want to publish my image to a Docker registry, I need to have the username and the password. But I don't want to pass them in a clear text, so I can also add this secrets keyword for the other parameters. As you can see, in this case, there's no type, which is required instead for the inputs. But you can specify if a secret is required or not. After you have all of this, you can start writing your workflow like you would normally do. Adding checkout, adding all your steps. And you can, of course, reference your input parameters and secrets using secrets and inputs keywords with the name of the parameter. So nothing new here, exactly as we would do in composite actions and any other workflow. But differently from composite actions, you can also have multiple jobs. You see, I have the build job over here, and I have this do something else job over here as well. So my reusable workflow has th these two jobs. Now I can commit this, and we're good to go. Easy, right? One thing to keep in mind is that if the reusable workflow has other triggers rather than only the workflow underscore call, you may want to make sure it doesn't run multiple times by accident. Now that we have our reusable workflow created, let's see how we can reference it and use it in another workflow. And say we'll meet until the end, because I will talk about the limitations and how the reusable workflows can be useful. I am now in another repository, and I want to use the reusable workflow I've just created in the other repository in this workflow. As you can see, I already have a job over here, but that's not a problem. What I can do is just adding another job. Let's call it Docker. And I will not add anything else, because the runs on all the parameters are in my reusable workflow. So all I have to do is specify what this job will use with the uses clause. I will use my account or organization, the name of the repository where the reusable workflow is, and finally, the full path of your YAML file, which will always be .github slash workflows slash the name of your YAML file where you have your reusable workflow. 
Lastly, we need to give this a version as we normally do in any actions we use. You can either create a tag for a specific version of your file in your repo, or if you want to use the general version, just use at main. Next thing we have to do is passing the parameters. And we have two different ways to pass in the parameters because if you remember when we've created the reusable workflow, we had the inputs and we have the secrets. To pass the inputs to the reusable workflow, we use the with keyword. And then of course we specify the names of the inputs with the value we want them to have. And for the secrets instead, we use the secrets keyword, again, with the name of the inputs and the values we want them to have. And this is basically it. Now we can commit this and we can try and use it. Let's go to our actions. It's reusable workflow user and let's kick this off. As you can see, we have the do it job, which was part of the color workflow. And then we have this docker, which is how I call the job in the caller, but we also have the name of the jobs in the reusable workflow. Build and do something else. Everything is running, and as you can see, if we go to the docker build, we have all the steps that are present in our reusable workflow job that are expanded into this one. So in here, we were able to reuse all the steps and the whole workflow, even with multiple jobs, thanks to the reusable workflow in a color workflow in another repo. Workflow reuse also promotes best practices because you can use workflows that have already been tested, have already been tried out, and so on and so forth, and are proved to be well designed. And also, you and your organization can create a library of centrally managed workflows to be reused across the different projects and organization-wise. Before we move on to talk about the limitations and some of the caveats you need to know about reusable workflows, hit the like button below if you're enjoying this video or you find it insightful. This will help this video to be recommended to more viewers so they can benefit from it. And of course, it would mean a lot to me. Thank you. So let's start with a few notes. First, remember that reusable workflows are currently in a beta, so things may change by the time they reach GA. Second, for a workflow to be able to use it, a reusable workflow must be stored in the same repo as the caller, or in a public repo, or yet in an internal repo with settings that allow it to be accessed. Let's talk now about limitations. As direct results of what we've just said about repositories, Reusable workflows cannot be used by other workflows if they are in private repos, uh, unless, of course, the caller is in the same repo. Also, reusable workflows cannot call another reusable workflow. Finally, and this is a big one you need to remember, environment variables set at the workflow level of the caller workflow are not automatically passed to the uh, reusable workflow. So if you need any of those value in the reusable workflow, you need to pass them using the parameters as we've seen in the demo I've shown. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about these new reusable workflows, if and how you plan to use them, and if there is any feature that you think it's missing. Also, you may check out this video over here in which I talk about composite actions as templates. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coded Dave.